Don't forget the doc. Several network participants recently called into Dr. Rick Wright's Old School Sunday's radio show. Check this out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, one of the, the geniuses of our family in the world of music, graduate of Syracuse University, the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications, attorney Case Western Reserve, Cleveland, Ohio, the assistant director of the world famous Berkeley School of Music, in Boston, Massachusetts, is our in resident musical expert, former member of the New Decade here in Syracuse, New York, a long time ago with Jackson 5 and Michael Jackson was just getting started. And also the attorney for Levert and the OJs, Mr. John Kellogg, Esquire. John, how you doing this afternoon? I'm, I'm doing well, Doc, right under the circumstances. You know, I, I was very shocked when I got the news of Michael. It kind of uh, harkened me back to the call I got when Gerald died, you know. Oh, and yes. It, it, so it kind of brought back those memories, which was really tough, but... You know, you mentioned the new decade. I go back when we talk about the Jackson 5, because even preceding the new decade was the decade. And that was a group of about uh, 10 guys, and, and there was a five-man singing group and a five-person band. And that was back when uh, uh, I Want You Back first came out. And that was something that we had to put in our repertoire to be competitive. And, uh, and that was one of the first songs we learned was I Want You Back. So when I heard that, it really brought back the Syracuse connection. Um. And, you know, without the Jackson 5... There would have been no new addition. There would have been no new kids on the block. Yes. There would have been no Backstreet Boys, no NSYNC, no Usher, no Chris Brown, no Justin Timberlake. So. And I'm going to bring up another group this afternoon that nobody's mentioned. The Osmonds, man. Yeah, absolutely. The, Os the Osmonds really, really were the ones that were biting on, on, on the... The Jackson Five. I yeah, mean, everybody been, thought. In a year. They thought that the uh, everybody thought the Osmonds were the Jackson Five, man. That's right. That's One right. bad apple, blah blah blah. Right. You know that one, man. Yeah, that's but, right, right. But that's a big time story. After I want you back, that was on the airwave. So yes, I think we owe a great, great uh, 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 debt to what uh, not only uh, Michael Jackson, yes, uh, soul did, but what what the Jackson Five did, and that all goes back to. Uh, very Gordy. But I wanted to talk about a couple of other Please, things. Please, whatever you want you know, to do, Michael, lay it out. Michael really undertook some brilliant business moves. In spite of the fact over the past few years he's had financial difficulty, you have to look at at least a couple of things I want to talk about. One was the financing of the Thriller video. You know, he went to CBS and said, look, I want to do this tremendous 10-minute video, and CBS, and it's going to cost a million dollars, And they the way, said CBS. no, I bet you. And CBS said no. Come yeah. on, Michael. They don't even play black artists on MTV. What's going to be the value of us making a million-dollar video? Okay. And Michael was bold enough to say, look, I'm going to put together a 10-minute movie that's really going to set this album off, and it's really going to set off MTV, so to speak. They're going to be forced to play it. And he did that, and of course, not only did he do that, but he broke down the racial barriers on MTV, because at that time, they wouldn't play black artists. So that was one brilliant business move that Michael made. The second one was in the 90s, buying out the publishing interest of the Beatles catalog that is currently, well, I think he bought it for, at that time, I don't remember the exact price, maybe it was 70, uh... It's a lot of jacks, huh? Uh, maybe it's it's seventy five million dollars or something, but yes. now that catalog is worth between four and five hundred million dollars, oh. almost a half a billion dollars. Save me, Benjamins, this afternoon. Money, 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 money. Oh, wow. Yes. Keep yeah, taking down. Well, that's the thing that's been able to keep Michael alive and, and keep uh, him in a position to raise uh, the family that, that he was trying to raise. And, and lastly, outside of the business, then outside of the great debt of gratitude that I think we owe to the Jackson Five and to Michael, uh, uh, God bless his soul, was I'm concerned about these cocktails, these drug cocktails that a number of celebrities we find are dying from today. I mean, we go back into, even to my client, Gerald LaBert's death of two or three years ago, Anna Nicole Smith, Heath Ledger, and now Michael Jackson. I think it really shows the pressure that these celebrities are under to be constantly on, sometimes needing the help of drugs to maintain them through the pain. Most of these celebrities, most people need to recognize, 
are, have anxiety problems and are taking anxiety medications. They have to wake up, they have to be up, and they have to be on. They have to take medications for that. And then, after being on for a number of hours, many of them need other medications to bring them down so that they're able to sleep. And then lastly, and this is the thing that I think really kicks most of these celebrities over, is dealing with pain and having to work and play and perform through the pain. And that was certainly the case with Michael Jackson. As I understand, he had some vertebrae problems. I also heard that he injured an ankle and practicing and preparing for this tour. So I think the combination of those drugs, and it's becoming so prevalent in today's society, and particularly in the entertainment world, that it's really something that, as an industry, we're going to have to look at because we're losing, we're losing too many great ones. John Kellogg Esquire, Syracuse University's famous graduate. And John, tell her about that great book that you wrote, man. Uh, take care of your music business, right. And John is the assistant director of the world-famous Berkeley School of Music. Boston, Massachusetts, John, I love you. You're my in-resident poet as we discuss the life, the legacy, and the incredible innovations of Michael Jackson. Well, thank you for all you do, Doc Wright, and thanks for the time. Be well. Talk to you in a couple of weeks. You take care. John Kellogg, the big-time assistant director of the famous Berkeley School of Music. Stand by, everybody. Stand by. All right, so get to all the Syracuse University alums throughout the world. Checking out Dr. Rick Wright, Power 106.9, Old School Sunday. On a big, bad Sunday afternoon, Dr. Rick Wright, live and well in Syracuse here at Power 106.9 Radio. Do it. The network reminds you that you too may call in to Dr. Rick Wright on Sundays between 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check in with the doc at area code 315-428-1069. Don't forget the doc.